Hello everyone! Welcome back! The topic for today is about research questions. The learning objective is that for you to be able to state your research questions. Here are some terms that you will encounter as you formulate your research questions. But first, you have to identify and state your research problem. Kasi sa research problem, syempre magmumula ang iyong mga katanungan. Ano nga ba ang research problem? This is a review lang naman. Research problem refers to the particular issue which you will address in your study. Your research problem can be an issue or a specific area of concern. Then you should also have your problem statement. And your problem statement answers the question, why is the problem worthy of being investigated? Bakit ba itong problema to ay dapat pag-aralan? Bakit ito dapat investigahan? Then after identifying your research problem and your problem statement, for sure, makakaisip na kayo dyan ng mga research questions. Research questions will help you define the research problem that your study intends to answer. So, ito ay naka-question format. So, may tinatawag tayong general research questions. It is derived from the main problem of the study. Mula sa general research question, mag-system out ang iba't ibang specific research questions. It must contain words related to quantitative research such as effects or relationships. As I've said, mula sa general research questions, makakabuo kayo ng specific research questions ninyo. And these specific research questions must be helpful in developing tools for collecting data, gathering related references, organizing your paper, and drawing valid conclusions from findings. It must be related to the research objectives or goals that your research aims to achieve. May bilang ba ng research question na dapat makita sa iyong paper? Wala namang pong specific number as long as it addresses your research problem. And then, the one-sentence summary of the arguments that you presented in your study na tinatawag natin thesis statement. So, ito na yung summary, yung overall point of view mo sa iyong magiging pag-aaral. There are different types of specific research questions. These are according to Barrot in 2017. So, parallel siya dun sa types of quantitative research na pinag-aralan natin last time. The first type of specific research question is for descriptive research. It focuses on the observation and report of the measurable aspects of a phenomenon. Since observation lang siya, hindi siya naglalayong alamin ng relationship or causes ng isang variable, but it would like to describe lamang yung variable na pinag-aaralan. Specific research questions in this kind of study can begin with phrases such as how often, how frequently, how many, how much, what is, what are, to what extent, what proportion, and what percentage. So, ang sagot sa mga katanungan nito ay nagde-describe lamang ng data. For example, how often do employees use Facebook in one week? How many hours do employees spend on Facebook per week? What proportion of Filipino male and female employees uses Facebook? Another type of specific research question is for correlational research. It establishes mere association and not causal relationships. So, ang mga tanong dito sa correlational research, madalas nagsisimula sa phrases na Is there a relationship? Or what is the relationship? For example, what is the relationship between the length of the review and examination scores? Is there a relationship between the IQ of a test taker and his or her performance in the review sessions? Is there a relationship between the performance of a test taker in a previous examination and the length of review he or she takes for a new one? There are also specific research questions for ex post facto research, and this attempts to discover the causes of the phenomenon which have already occurred or taken effect on the subject even before the conduct of the study or have not been introduced in the study itself. 
Remember, yung ex post facto, tinatawag din siyang causal comparative research. So, ang mga tanong dapat dito, hindi lang inaalam ang causes, but also uh, the differences and the similarities of two variables. For example, is there a difference between the digital literacy scores of information technology students and vocational students? So, inaalam yung cause at the same time ang difference sa literacy scores ng mga IT students at ng mga tech voc students. There are also specific research questions for experimental and quasi-experimental researches. Remember, sa so experimental research, mayroong pre-test at mayroong post-test. Sa quasi-experimental research naman, may pre-test and post-test, maliban doon ang respondents na hati sa dalawang grupo, the controlled and the experimental group. So, specific research questions here suggest a stronger causal relationship among the variables in the study. Specifically, this causal relationship is linked to the manipulation of a certain variable. Kasi nga mayroong dependent at independent variable kapag experimental and quasi-experimental research during the study itself. For example, is there a significant post-test gain on students' academic performance? Is there a difference between the post-test gains of the control group and treatment group? How do students rate their experiences in one-on-one -on -one tutorial sessions? Usually, ang tanong kung mapapansin ninyo, the difference between pre-test and post-test or the difference between the experimental and controlled group data scores or numerical scores, numerical data itself yung hinihiling kasagutan. Let us try to answer this exercise. Kanina nakita natin yung flow sa kung paano ka mag identify and mag-state ng iyong research problem. Now, um, mula sa mga pagpipili ang salita dito, pagsunod-sunodin natin sila. Okay, we have problem statement, specific research questions, research problem, general research questions, and then thesis statement. Mula sa discussion kanina, magsa-start muna tayo sa ating research problem. And then after ni research problem, you have to write your problem statement. Ano ba ang kahalagahan ng pag-investigate sa research problem na yan? And then start thinking of your general research question. After mong maka-formulate ng iyong general research question, marami ka ng mabubuong specific research questions and that will enable you to come up with a one-sentence thesis statement. Now, let us answer this evaluation. We have here a sample research topic entitled The Effects of Online Campaigning on the Preferred Election Candidates of Young Voters. So, kailangan mag-generate tayo dito ng general question. Since ito ay isang experimental research, dapat mayroong mga terms such as effects and relationships sa ating general question. Ito po ang maaari nating maging general question sa topic na yan. What are the effects of online campaigning on the preferred election candidates of young voters? Now, ilan sa mga specific questions ay ito. How do election candidates advertise themselves through online campaigning? Alamin muna ano ba yung mga ginagamit nilang online platforms or gano'ng katagal yung exposure ng young voters na to sa mga platforms na yan. Then, ask if there is a significant increase in positive evaluations of candidates advertised through online campaigning. Positive ba yung evaluations or negative ba yung evaluations? In writing your research paper, you should also set your scope and the limitations. So here, you are expected to indicate the scope and the limitation of your study. In doing your research study, make sure that you have certainty and reasons for drawing the inclusion and exclusion of research variables. Dapat tukoy mo kung ano yung mga isasali mo at hindi mo isasali or yung i-include at exclude mo sa iyong Paper, you are not just writing just for the sake of writing the parts of the research paper. That is why gumagawa ka ng iyong scope and delimitation.
Once again, scope specifies the coverage of your studies such as variables, population, or participant, and timeline. So, ito yung uh, lawak ng iyong pag-aaral. While the limitation cites factors of our study that are not included or excluded or those that will not deal in our study. Ito naman yung mga limitasyon or boundary na hindi nasakop ng iyong magiging paper. In writing your scope and delimitation, dapat lang alam mo yung basic profile or basic information about your paper because it has components. First is the topic of the study. What are the variables to be included and excluded? Sasagutin mo yung question na yun. Then the objectives or problems to be addressed. Why are you doing this study? The time frame. When are you going to conduct this study? Local of the study. Where are you going to gather your data? Yung place. Characteristics of the respondents. Who will be your respondents? And maybe, ano yung gagawin mong method sa pag-select sa iyong mga respondents? Method and research instruments. How are you going to collect the data? Ikaw ba ay gagamit ng isang survey? Or aside from survey, are you going to use uh, interview questions para makollect yung data na kailangan mo? So, ito yung mga questions na sasagutin mo dapat sa pagsulat ng iyong scope and delimitation. Dahil dyan, ilalagay mo rin kung ano yung mga hindi mo magagawa. This is a review na lang din kasi last year, alam ko naman na pinag-aralan nyo na yung difference ni delimitation at limitation. So, huwag sana tayong mako-confuse sa dalawang yan. When we say delimitation, these are various limitations that arose during the design and conduct of the study. So, yung delimitation, hindi mo sinasadya or hindi mo kontrolado, pero hindi ito sakop ng iyong pag-aaral. While the limitation of the study is actually the identified scope of the study. Before mo pala i-conduct to, alam mo na na hindi mo to masasakop, hindi mo ito maisusulat. Okay, now let us try to apply yung natutunan ninyo by answering this what's new activity. I-identify natin kung ano-ano yung mga components of the scope and delimitation mula sa sample scope and delimitation of the study na ito. Let me read it first. The main objective of this study is to provide information about students' knowledge and perception of genetically modified food and their family health practices. The study also includes the students' personal information and occupation of their parents and siblings. This study is limited to the 120 grade 12 male and female enrolled in the first semester school year 2019 to 2020 of Gusa Regional Science High School. 10. Each of the respondents is given questionnaire to answer. The students selected came from six different sections to prevent subjective perceptions. First component is the topic of the study. The topic is all about the students' knowledge and perception of genetically modified food and their family health practices. While the objective of the study is to provide information about students' knowledge and perception of genetically modified food and their family health practices. Time frame in which the study will be conducted from school year 2019 to 2020. The locale or area where the study will be conducted, Gusa Regional Science High School 10. Characteristics of the participants of the study, grade 12 male and female students enrolled in the first semester. Other parameters, 120 students from 6 different sections. That's all for this lesson. Kung may katanungan man, maaaring magtanong sa ating comments section. Thank you for watching my video and if you found this video helpful, then please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and then ring the bell button.